Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome to this week's Gold and Silver Club end of week review. Presented by myself today, Phil Carr and Nick Kelsey. Today we'll be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets. We'll be analysing the week's performance. The live session will cover an end of week summary for gold, silver and commodity currencies. We'll look at the top trades of the week, uh, live market commentary and technical analysis, the week ahead, key events looking forward and of course we'll be covering any questions you may have as well during the course of, uh, of this morning's call. Okay, so this week, um, let's talk about gold price. Let's start off and have a look. So from the 11th of March through to the 15th, what we've really seen um, is that gold has actually headed for its second weekly advance as the US dollar has started to retreat. So if you have a look at spot gold at the moment, it's currently trading above $1,590 an ounce. So it's actually heading for its second weekly gain as the US dollar um, has dropped and enhanced some demand for, um, for gold. The recent encouraging US economic data um, has actually pushed the US dollar index to a seven and a half month high, whilst gold prices have traded sideways within the range really um, throughout the last, uh, certainly um, last fortnight, $1,554 to $1,600 per ounce. And yesterday's report for the US showed the initial jobless claims dropped by three to 3,322,000 3, in the week ending March the 10th from a revised 342,000 and projection of 350,000. The report actually confirmed the progress in the US labor market as last week's non-farm payroll showed the US economy added 236,000 jobs. So we saw a massive move um, on both gold and silver last week. A big whipsaw actually in price which we'll look at today um, on last uh, Friday's non-farm payroll numbers. And the unemployment rate slipped to 7.7% from 7.9%. So uh, we had some impressive numbers on Friday, which we'll talk through very shortly. So this is once again uh, sparked speculation that the Federal Reserve will wind down its stimulus programs, uh, including the Fed's $85 billion in monthly bond buying programs known as QE3. And ahead of uh, the eagerly awaited FOMC meetings, that's next uh, Tuesday, the big question is going to be what impact will the FOMC have on gold and silver prices next week. So there's going to be a lot of uh, important news announcements next week and we'll actually we'll have a look at the live chart, see what uh, non-farm payroll did and what to really expect next week and uh, for key news announcements. Okay, so a little bit about myself and Nick Kelsey on the call with you today. I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer and speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the biggest financial markets in the world, so gold, silver, oil and forex. I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders, successfully manage their own investment portfolio. I'm responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a proven track record of generating returns for traders. I'm also a regular contributor to a number of financial publications and speak at numerous trading seminars on webinars and uh, workshops. Joining me on the call uh, is Nick Kelsey, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, Nick spent over five years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. It's through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, Nick discovered the formula, mindset and tools that give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy. He regularly writes for a number of global business and financial publications and appears frequently uh, on financial television. In fact, uh, this is us on Dukascopy TV. We're just on there uh, yesterday, actually, giving our um, opinions and insights and for forecast on gold um, for this month. This is just some um, of our recent global coverage in, in the press. 
Okay, fantastic. So moving forward, we're just going to quickly um, move across. We're going to look at our top trades of the week very shortly as well. Uh, we want to just have a look at gold. We've started to break out of this consolidation zone really on gold this week. Uh, so if you want to have a look at the price of gold right now, $1,592 an ounce at the moment. We're seeing some interesting... Um, market moves actually towards the end of this week. Been a, bit, a little bit quiet at the beginning of the week but now things are really starting to ramp up yesterday and even this morning so we'll certainly have a look at that. There's lots to look at um, today. Okay, so top trades that we've had over the last week, including non-farm payroll, which um, I can see some of you on the, on the call were on last week's non-farm payroll special that we did, and what a, a non-farm payroll that was. Some fantastic moves we had. I hope a lot of you caught some profits on that. So uh, some of the top trades we had of the week, this is USD CAD actually, uh, a position which is actually this position is, is, is still coming down at the moment um, in, in more profits, but this is USD CAD taken um, on non-farm payroll where we've had a nice setup at resistance, twice that resistance level has been tested, um, we've seen the price, it's taken a few days for it to come across, more of a swing trade as the price has actually finally started to break down and you can see even this morning it's broken down further um, beyond this level of support at 1.1%. Uh, sorry, 1.0215. So that was just a simple risk of 21 pips uh, per lot we traded, so $210 per lot, and uh, we made a profit of 84 pips on each lot, so 840 USD for a 4 to 1 risk to reward. Uh, on USD Canadian dollars, so that's quite nice. You see that's moved uh, lower even further today. Uh, New Zealand dollar Japanese yen was a really nice trade. We actually you saw the market uh, broke out just before uh, non-farm payroll in the morning, but it very quickly reversed on non-farm payroll, put in a quite a, a nice setup um, that we use at the Gold and Silver Club, and we can see the price has reversed at resistance. It's come down and came down to our exact support line actually. So um, entry of 79.31, and you can see 93 pip move to the downside. Very quick move as well, just over the afternoon on non-farm payroll for 93 pips. So 24 pip risk. Uh, each lot traded 240 USD for a profit of 900, uh, sorry, 93 pips or 930 um, USD uh, for a 3 to 1 risk to reward on that trade. Slightly more than 3 to 1 actually, about 3.5 to 1. That was a nice uh, short sell just on the non-farm payroll. Australian dollar CAD, actually you can see there's quite a key level of support that we'd uh, been holding for most of last week. Uh, this actually got broken, nice move to the downside on non-farm payroll as well. Very quick move, very um, nice profitable trade set up there. So entry level 1.0547, you can see highlighted with a little circle where the support level broke. And uh, 20 pip risk for each lot traded, so 200 USD for 62 point profit. Uh, you can see the price came down and we hit this uh, level of support, price reversed, and that was time to get out. So for each lot traded, 20 pips, 200 risk, 200 USD risk, and 62 pips of profit, 620 USD for each lot we traded. Okay, and more uh, to some of the trade setups we've seen this week. Um, still got more trades running actually at the moment, but the um, we had quite a nice move on gold. This was on Wednesday. We actually finally broke out of this um, consolidation zone. So we had been um, testing 1,586 um, really several times over the last well, 10 days. You can see on hopefully on my screen there where you can see there's this um, yellow line of resistance, 1,586. The price really couldn't break through it. So we had um, orders set up uh, for the price to break that, should it, do, should it do so, and we did get a breakout, 1,586. You can see it came up initially to 1,598 actually. It came back down and then it had another um, challenge at the, at the 1,600 level. Couldn't quite do it, so it was time to get out. Uh, so each lot traded 30 points of risk, so 300 USD for each lot traded for a profit of 120 um, points there, so for 1,200 USD profit for a 4 to 1 um, risk to reward. So just a nice quick breakout move there on gold, and it didn't quite get to 1,600, but it may well retest that. Um, early next week, even today if we get some um, big big moves, if we can break out to the upside, but more likely that if we are going to test it, we could see a retest next week. So we'll look at that very shortly. And um, GBP New Zealand dollar, so you may have seen the pound dollars had a, a nice um, breakout move to the upside. I mean, it's been really um, selling off uh, 
a lot over the last two months or so since February. You can see there's been a lot of downside. I mean, the overall momentum is still down, but we have seen um, quite a big move to the upside just yesterday. So this was actually really a uh, nice setup on pound New Zealand dollar. You can see we had a level of support. We had the right, um, just highlighted in the little circle here. This was uh, set up for us to get into this particular trade. So the risk on this trade um, was uh, 42 pips. So each lot traded 420 USD for a profit of 251 pips. So we came up here. We actually reached our profit target. You can see this market very much moving sideways, um, pound New Zealand dollar, over the last um, three weeks or so. This is just in a four-hour time frame at the moment. Um, so really nice five-to-one risk to reward there on pound New Zealand dollar. So those are our top uh, five trades of the week. We do have more trades running at the moment, which we can certainly report on next week, which are moving nicely into profit at the moment. But let's have a look at um, some live uh, technical analysis. So we, we go across to the live charts and um, see what is going on this morning with the markets. Okay, I'm just going to switch greens, guys. So you just you might get a, just a temporary pause here as I switch greens. Just bear with me. Um, yeah, the first market I wanted to really pay attention to was um, USD Canadian dollar. I've been watching this market for quite a while because uh, if you go on daily time frame, actually, you might have to zoom out a little bit here so you see. And uh, we are actually coming up to a previous level of resistance here. So you can actually see going back to, uh, to really June 2012, this whole area here, which has provided resistance earlier on in the year. And we are very interested in these uh, in these levels because often they can represent um, future levels of resistance as well. So we can see this level here hasn't really been broken through. We had um, a nice setup on this. Price came down. Was supported by a price action level at 1.02544 here. We've actually got two price action levels. Um, very close to each other. So we were looking, uh, number one, for setup at resistance, which we did have. And we were also looking for, because the price was being supported at this level, for a breakdown from this actual level of uh, this level of support, and we got that yesterday. You can, you can see here we've actually broken down. Key moving averages looking good now for the price for potentially USD CAD to take a breather now. It's had quite a good run, of, well, a very good run so far in 2013. You can see we've come up to a key level of resistance. This market is starting to look a bit weak. Um, there is obviously uh, a lot of correlation between USD CAD and the US dollar index, and also inversely to gold. So we're starting to see gold um, form a little bit of a base now and starting to, to potentially going to have another attack of 1600. So if we see gold break out to the upside, USD CAD likely to continue its move to the downside. Uh, you can actually see, so we've got a engulfing bearish candle here anyway on USD Canadian dollar, so that's engulfing um, at least two candles on the daily, and we are seeing now this level of support 1.02153 breaking down. So you can see here where we are starting to see there's not too much uh, to, to, to stop the price really coming down now. Um, so USD Canadian dollar uh, looking like there's quite a lot of weakness on this market at the moment. Um, it's taken a while for this market to actually uh, make a decision as to whether it was just going to be supported and go higher for a breakout or whether it was going to break down. And we are certainly this morning uh, starting to see this price break down. So USD Canadian dollar, uh, one to certainly um, be uh, keeping an eye on. So let's have a look at gold, which moves uh, the inverse really to USD Canadian dollar the majority of the time. Uh, so we can see here what's happened on gold. So if we just go and highlight the move we've had this week. So this whole area of consolidation that we've been having um, since the end of February really from, here we go, so from this this whole, you, you can actually draw like a square um, there, just to show a box if you like, just to show where the, the price is consolidating. So we consolidated between 1561 to 1586. So a break down in price or a break out in price to the upside, um, you tend to see the more the price kind of goes sideways, consolidates. It's like a, a spring being wound up. Then finally, when it breaks, it's gonna it's gonna have a bit of a, a a momentum, high momentum move to it. So we saw that on Wednesday, price broke up at 1586. And we came up, and uh, this is where we've actually tested the 1600. Hasn't followed through. Now um, we are, so we are still seeing the price hold above. I mean, it closed above the 1590s yesterday. Um, so we are. It's looking in the short term. It's it's looking like a. a, a the bulls are in control of this market in the short term. Let's just go to the day. Uh, you can see some of the key MAs on the daily are actually starting to. Um, 
to hook upwards. Uh, you can see just here signifying that we may be about to bottom out in the gold market. Now we don't know how long this will actually last because Federal Reserve announcement is next week on Tuesday. So um, that could really put a spanner in the works for um, for this this move in gold at the moment. But the key levels to really have a look at for, for gold we are still very much in a downtrend, so this represents, this green line on here is a trend line, represents the downtrend. So really, for this market to um, to break out to the upside, it needs to get above the 1630s. And what you may see is that the price, we could have a breakout to the upside, let's say 1616 would be the previous um, level that we haven't broken through since mid-February. That's, that's going to be the first um, important level for gold to be able to break out from. And we may see profit take and the price come back down. If we can break through 1616, then you've got some key areas of uh, resistance between 1620 to 1630. And obviously, you're going to be also got this level here, which is the down downtrending. Let me just go to daily. His daily. This is the trend line which has been in place um, since the end of September 2012. Okay, so that's been holding really firmly. So we need to break out of that level, and what we may see here is that uh, if, if the momentum continues, if the trend continues on gold to the downside, this may be where all the, you get all the short sellers coming, the profit taking, and then we may see the next leg lower in gold. So that's something to be mindful of um, with uh, gold longs. Also, if we do break out of this consolidation zone, it can break out of 1630, can get to 1650 or even break out of 1650, that would signify um, a breakout of the downtrend. And so that's what to look at over sort of more in the interim over the next few weeks but in the very short term uh, yeah gold needs to clear 1600 um, at the moment that's an important sort of barrier seems to be at the moment and we've got the Federal Reserve announcement next Tuesday so that may cause some uh, breakouts in price or breakdown in price okay so that's gold and let's take a look at silver because silver is actually quite interesting so you can see silver here building a base you've got um, quite a sharp sort of known as a dragonfly doji reason being it's a candlestick looks like a dragonfly this is um, a, a bullish candle so we've seen that these candles have been put in several times um, three times actually over the last fortnight or so we can see so we had a uh, price price keeps coming down to test these lower levels and get support buyers are coming into the market you can see we're starting to bottom out a little bit in silver here as well um, struggling to get uh, to cl really clear about 29.30 at the moment but we do have you can see clear levels of support these are price action levels as well but clear levels of support at the moment and one, you've got this 28.30 level, which is providing support. Um, we can see we've had some really clear bounces off this level. You've got the trend line where we've, um, if I just go on the, the trend line here, you can see where we've got trend line which has been in place uh, since the end of 2012. We've got a very clear bounce off that at the end of February. And if we just go back again, we're just consolidating a little bit on silver. So uh, again, we may see this market pop to the upside. It's probably going to be quite dependent as well next week on the Federal Reserve news. We could see it pop to the upside, and really it needs to clear above uh, roughly about 29.30, this sort of level to uh, to get back in the, uh, the to, to get back in really more longs interested in this market. But um, it's still bearish Over, overall. The, the market sentiment on this is uh, is still bearish on silver, but we do seem to be consolidating. So awaiting further news um, on silver currently. So let's take a look at the Euro USD. Really like the Euro USD was um, very interesting yesterday. We came down, uh, we just came down to 1.2980, uh, and uh, we we actually had quite a lot of buying up here at this particular level. Really formed a hammer quite quickly. If you're watching the live markets yesterday on the daily time frame, and that's actually played out really well because the price um, it's a trade that we've actually still got running at the moment, which we'll probably talk about next week. Um, so the, our first sort of uh, level that we've been interested in for the price to um, we, were, we were interested to see if the price would get to this. It was 1.3072. So you can see uh, price is coming up to resistance on Euro USD there. So 1.3072. So very interested to see whether this market is going to uh, be able to break through that level, or if it's going to reverse and come back down, or if it can break out towards some higher um, price action levels here. You can see overall the market sentiment of um, Euro USD is still bearish. Uh, we still, if you you can draw a very simple trend line just on this market, here you go. Market is still uh, trending downwards, and potentially we are. Um, just coming up to the upper end of that sort of trend line at the moment, uh, you can just see that's quite clear just to draw on your on your chart there. So if you're looking at euro, just bear that in mind. It does need to uh, 
it's got some work to do. Okay, so that's Euro at the moment. So Euro was looking interesting yesterday when it came and tested the lower end of this trend line, 1.29072. Uh, so if you are trading the Euro, something to have a look at. Uh, Australian US dollar, okay, Australian US dollar, um, again, it's had quite a really nice move this week. And Australian US dollar has, uh, it's kind of found a little bit of, um, it's come into a bit of a halt at the moment. It found a bit of resistance at 1.03725. Uh, so it happens to be a key price action level as well. We're interested um, to see if the market is going to reverse at this level, if it's going to run out of steam, or whether it's going to come and manage to break out a little bit further to the upside and come up to this key level of resistance held during January. Um, we are at a resistance level that was tested a few times back in sort of mid-February. Uh, I've just gone on the daily time frame. We'll just have a quick peek and see, what's, uh, see what the overall market is doing here. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's back above some key moving averages there. Actually, it's, it's, it's bullish at the moment, this market. Australian US dollar is really favoring the upside rather than the downside. You can see it's, it's kind of back above some, some real, well, all of its key moving averages now. Um, so the overall sentiment of Australian US dollar, certainly, it's, it's bullish at the moment. And as you know, Australian US dollar, we do see correlation going into gold and silver and an inverse relationship with USD CAD. So um, Australian US dollar CAD, uh, sorry, if Australian US dollar continues the upside, we would expect the same really to continue with gold and silver and the USD Canadian dollar to continue to sell off. Um, with that in mind, the, the candlesticks we're putting in here do signify there is some profit taking currently happening on Australian US dollar. Okay, and let's move across quickly to um, look at Australian um, Canadian dollar. So this market has uh, been very much um, in an uptrend. So we've seen actually we are seeing some profit taking at the moment. So we are um, finding actually resistance. I can just draw a very simple line here. God, that's uh, that's pinpoint accuracy, isn't it? Um, so that's just happened this morning, actually. So, so look at this. October 2011, level of resistance, where the price bounced off exactly. So a lot of traders, obviously, targeting this particular level for um, taking profit. So you hopefully can see that cleanly on your chart. Um, so 1.06633. Exact pinpoint accuracy, that's where traders sold this market again um, just this in the early hours today. So the market is selling off. We are on the over. This is a, a weekly time frame. That's quite a bearish candle. Let's just look in the daily. And uh, if we go across to the daily, yeah, that's quite a bearish um, candle as well. We're starting to see some take profit. The overall market momentum of Australian dollar, Canadian dollar is up. You can see that also just put a very simple trend line on this. You can see the market has been big move up here so we'd be very interested to see what the Australian US dollar is going to do next whether we're going to start to find some weakness and see if there's going to be some profit taking to take this market back into its sort of a channel where it's been moving sideways recently on Australian dollar Canadian dollar okay so those are really um, the most interesting markets to be looking at today as I say the beginning of the week was a little bit quiet but certainly as always this is why it really pays off to be, be patient in your trading until you get the right setups for your trading and then everything's really been um, go 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 like from uh, really from from Wednesday and particularly yesterday onwards there's been lots of um, certainly using the gold and silver club signature strategies which we don't go in detail on these webinars Okay, so with that, let's um, move across and have a look at the important news um, moving forward, okay, for, for next week. So just a summary there, the main markets we've just covered today have been USD, Canadian dollar, gold, silver, Euro, USD, Australian, US dollar, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Okay, so we are now going to uh, just move across to the major news uh, next week. Okay, so the key events really looking forward over the next week, today at 12.30 p.m., we have the U.S., uh, this is the core CPI, so that's obviously going to affect the uh, U.S. dollar index, and that's going to be um, pretty important as well. So this measures the change in the price of goods and services, excluding food and energy. The CPI measures the price change from the perspective of the consumer, so it's the key way to measure changes in purchasing trends and inflation. A higher than expected reading is taken as bullish for the US dollar, while a lower than expected reading is taken as bearish. So this could affect certainly in about an hour's time 
Um, this could affect the gold and silver price and so the US dollar index at half 12. At uh, 1.30 p.m. we have the US FOMC member Fisher speak, so again this could uh, affect the US dollar, so probably going to get a, a volatile afternoon. Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas President Richard Fisher is to speak. FOMC members are responsible for um, just a bit of background on the announcement, setting the benchmark interest rate and their speeches are closely watched for indications on the future possible direction of monetary policy. So his comments may determine a positive or negative impact on the USD and commodity prices. So that could move the market to 1.30 to today. Those are really the we've only really got two key news announcements to watch out for this afternoon. Those are the are the two. Um, going into next week, next Tuesday, 10 a.m., we've got the German uh, ZEW um, economic sentiment. So that's important, especially for the euro index gauges. The six-month economic outlook uh, level above zero indicates optimism, and um, below that indicates the pessimism. Uh, a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the euro and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the euro. Okay, and on Tuesday, next Tuesday um, and Wednesday, so this is the big one guys, so mark this in your diary. You really need to know about the FOMC meeting. So the central bank will release the FOMC statement and the summary of economic projections. So Chairman Ben Bernanke will release the central bank's decision during press conferences on Tuesday and Wednesday. Really important, um, as, as a lot of you know already. So his comments may determine a positive or negative impact on the US dollar and commodity prices. So this could be the, the, the next real big move in gold and silver. Uh, next Thursday, 2 p.m., US uh, existing home sales. So that measures the change in the annualized number of existing residential buildings that were sold during the previous month and that report helps to gauge the strength of the US housing market. It's a key indicator of overall economic strength. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the USD while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the USD. So that's important again on Thursday and Friday at 9 a.m. we have the German IFO Business Climate Index and that measures the expectations for the next six months and that's a composite index based on a survey of manufacturers, builders, wholesalers and retailers and that index is compiled of the IFO Institute for Economic Research. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the euro and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the euro. So again very important for your euro, uh, euro trades. I may also have some effect. Um, also, there's some correlations with gold and silver. Okay, great. Well, it's uh, it's good to see lots of um, familiar faces again on the webinar. And um, of course, to request uh, information, if you enjoyed today's session, um, if you'd like to request additional information on our, our gold, silver, and forex trader coaching programs, you can of course do so at the goldandsilverclub.com forward slash course form. And you can also contact us at uh, our office at office at the golden silver club dot com. Our UK office uh, number and our Asia Pacific number 0207193043 or 852 zero four zero three so if you do want to uh, get some additional information very simply just go to our website click learn to trade and you can fill out a application form there just to get additional information on our uh, upcoming courses and of course um, as a lot of you do already make sure you subscribe to our newsletter at www.thegoldensilverclub.com to receive freakly, free weekly uh, gold silver and commodity currency news live market analysis and prices, which I know a lot of you uh, take advantage of already. Okay, fantastic. So we will be with you again the same time next Friday. Good luck for the rest of the day's trading and next week. Do keep an eye on the major news announcements, especially the Federal Reserve next week. And uh, if you need anything, just uh, do get in touch with us. Right, so with that, that's myself and Nick signing out. So have a great week, guys, and we'll speak to you on the next one. Okay, thanks and bye-bye.